class, our lesson for today is about limiting reactants. For today's lesson, I'm going to teach you how to calculate the limiting reactants, how to differentiate limiting reactants from excess reactant. And at the same time, I'm going to teach you how to calculate the actual and stoichiometric ratio, and lastly, the molar mass. Again, today class, in your lower grades, we deal with the idea of stoichiometric calculations where reactants combine with one another. In a specific molar ratio described by the balance equation. In that case, you assume that all the reactants are consumed in the reaction and are completely converted into products. However, in most chemical reactions, reactants are present in the mole ratios that are not the same as the ratio of the coefficients in the balance chemical equation. The quantities of reactants are really exact. Usually, there, there is too much of one reactant and not enough of, a, of another. Therefore, not all reactants are completely converted into products. One reactant is completely consumed in the reaction while the other one is in excess. So, in, in our first lesson, we're going to differentiate what is the limiting reactant and the excess reactant. When we say limiting reactant, it is an action that is completely used of or consumed in a chemical reaction. It is called the limiting reactant because it is used the, the amount of product formed in the reaction. What it, it, once it is consumed, the reaction is stopped. So, pag sinabi natin limiting reactant, again, it is the completely used up of combined or consumed in a chemical reaction. So, it limits the amount of product formed once it is consumed and the, uh, the reaction will stop. Tandaan natin, pag sinabi natin limit and react, limiting reactant, from the root word limit, nililimitahan niya yung reaction na binibigay doon sa chemical reactions na meron tayo mamaya or meron doon sa mga chemical reactions. Again, siya yung nagdidikta kung ilan lang i-produce doon sa isang reactions. Siya yung nagdidimits, yun yung root word. Well, on the other hand, pag sinabi naman natin, excess reaction, it is a reactant other than the limiting reaction or reactant. It is the reactant that is left over after chemical, chemical reaction. Again, from the word root word, excess Ibig sabihin sobra. Sobra dun sa reaction. Siya yung kabaliktaran nino ni limiting reactant. Kasi limiting reactant, siya yung naglilimita. Ito naman, from, from limitations on, the, on that reaction, siya yung excess. Kung bagay yung sobra dun sa reaction. Again, siya yung leftover sa pagkain yung natitira. Again, pag sinabi ng limiting reactant, it is, it limits the reaction rate or uh, uh, produce of reactions where excess reactant, it is a leftover or yung sobra. Now, how to find the limiting reactant? Paano ba natin makikita yung limiting reactant? How you can determine if the reactant is limited? Consider the reaction between molten sulfur and rolling gas to form disulfur dichloride according to this equation. So as you can see, this is the molten sulfur plus chlorine gas that yields to disulfur dichloride. So this is the reactant and this is the product of the reaction. So pinagsama yung sulfur sa kayong chlorine na nakabuo sila ng product na tinatawag natin disulfur trichloride. So, let's have now the problem. How to solve this reacting or reacting uh, reactant problem? So, to solve that, we have here the problem. The problem is, if you have 200 gram of sulfur that reacts with 100 gram of chlorine, what is the limiting reactant or what or what mass of disulfur dichloride 
is produced. Again, in this equation, we have two problems. We have what will be the limiting reactant and what will be the mass of disulfur dichloride. So, how are we going to calculate this problem? So, to calculate this problem, we have five steps on how to solve reacting problem or reactant problems. So, what are the five steps? The first step will be write down the, the known and unknown quantities in the problem. Again, write down the unknown and known quantities in the problem. So in the, in the problem, in the given problem, we have 200 gram of sulfur. So just write down as a given, we have 200 gram of sulfur. While chlorine, we have the mass of chlorine, we have 100 gram of chlorine. So these are the given. On the other hand, we have the unknown. Pag sinabi natin unknown, yun yung hinahanap, yun yung nawawala. Ang hinahanap natin is yung what is the limiting reactant. Ilagay mo letter A, ang hinahanap na isa is yung limiting reactant. Pangalawa, what will be the mass of disulfur dichloride? Ilagay mo dyan, mass of disulfur dichloride. Ibig sabihin, itong dalawang to, ito yung nawawala doon sa problem. Ngayon, ang paproblemahin natin, paano natin makukuha or masasolve itong dalawang to. So, we have, this is the step 1. Write down the known and unknown quantities in the problem. While in number 2, after you distinguish the known and unknown quantities in the problem, you're going to balance the equation. As you can see, in this equation, it, it is already balanced. Kung baga, balanced na siya actually doon sa binigay ng problem. So, pero, gagawin natin, or pupunta tayo doon sa original equation na hindi pa siya balanced para alam mo kung paano yung gagawin pag nagbabalance ng equation. So, paano ba gagawin ito? So, so, sa original ano niyan, equations, we have... Molten sulfur plus chlorine gas that yields to disulfur dichloride. Again, this is the reactant and this is the product. Reactant product. Sa reaction na to, nabuo sino? Si disulfur dichloride. Na, to balance that equation, ano yung unang step na dapat mong gagawin? First, identify the elements present in the equation. So, in the reactant, we have sulfur and chlorine. Sa product naman, we have sulfur also and chlorine. Now, the question is, parehas ba sila ng number of moles na present doon sa reactant sa kaproduct? Paano mong gagawin next? So, sa sulfur in the reactants, meron siyang 8 moles. While sa reactant also, sa chlorine, we have 2 chlorine. Dito naman sa product, we have 4 times 2, 4 times 2, we have 8 sulfur. And at the same time, 4 times 2 sa chlorine, we have 8. Now, after mo makuha yung mga moles nila, titignan mo, you're going to find if, this, if the reaction or the elements present in the reactant and product are equals. Equal na sila. Now, sa reactant, meron tayong 8 sulfur. While sa product, meron tayong din 8 sulfur. So, di na natin siya po problema. Ayun, there, is, there, are, there is no problem in this reactions or reactant. Kasi equal na sila, parehas ng 8. 
Pero, ang problema natin, si chlorine. Si chlorine, meron lang siya sa reactant na dalawa. Sa product naman, meron siyang it. Ibig, sab ibig sabihin, may kulang dito sa reactant. So, to balance that, mag-a-add tayo ng coefficient sa unahan ng chlorine. Now, think of a number na kung saan, pag pinag-times mo sa 2, ang kakalabasan ay 8. Ano kayang number yun? We have... Yes, very good. 4. We have 4. Now, itatimes mo lang kay ano yan, kay Chloe. 2 times 4, we have 8. Sa tingin mo, balance na ba yung equation? So, check natin. So, we have again, 8 sulfur and 8 sulfur sa product. And at the same time, we have... 8 chlorine saka 8 chlorine doon sa dalawang reactions. So, meaning, na-balance na yung equation. So, this, uh, this is how you balance a chemical equation. So, again, balik tayo doon sa step 2, balance the chemical equation. Okay. After step number 3, we have step Ay, na step number 2, we have step number 3. In the step number 3, you're going to convert mass of reactants to moles. Use the molar mass inverse as a convert conversion factor. So, this is the formula of molar mass in a conversion factor. So, ito yung formula. Now, kukuhain natin yung molar mass ng chlorine, ni chlorine sa hanisol 4. So, in the, in the given, we have 100 gram of chlorine and 200 gram of sulfur. So, ang gagawin mo lang, 100 gram, punta mo tayo kay chlorine, ang chlorine, kay chlorine muna tayo. 100 gram of chlorine times 1 mole of chlorine gas over 70.91 gram of, of chlorine equals to 1.41 mole of chlorine. Now, question. Sir, saan po nang galing itong 70.91 gram ng mga ano yan? Chlorine. Saan po namin makukumpit yan? Or paano namin makukuha yan? So, as you can see, in our periodic table, ahanapin mo lang si chlorine. So, ito si chlorine, pang 17 siya, siya sa periodic table. Tapos ngayon, hahanapin mo yung kanyang atomic mass. Ang atomic mass ni Ang atomic mass ni chlorine is 35 point, sorry, 35.44. So, ibig sabihin, sa kada isang chlorine, merong 35.44 na atomic mass or molar mass. So, ipag add mo lang yung 35, 35.44 plus 35.44. So, bakit dalawa? Kasi meron tayong dalawang chlorine kung makikita nyo. Meron tayong dalawang chlorine sa given. Now, kaya ibig sabihin may dalawang 35.44 o may dalawang chlorine. ipag a ko lang yung dalawang yun. For example, 35.44 plus 35.44, we have 8, 8, 0, we have 1, 3 plus 3 plus 1, 17. Ngayon, in this equation, converted na siya. Kaya naging 70.91 siya. Kasi converted na yung 80 sa 9. At meron pang something dito sa dulo. Kaya naging 1 to. So again, converted na to yung ano na yan, product ng chlorine or dichloride na yan. Kaya that is why ang nakuha is 70.91. Again, makukumpute mo lang yan, pupunta ka dun sa periodic table. That is why kailangan yun ng periodic table ngayon sana natin, sa topic natin. Make sure na may periodic table kayo para makuha niyo yung atomic mass or molar mass nung mga elements na presence dun sa problem. Again, we have 35.44 plus 35.44. We have 70.91. Now, after that, yung 100 gram of dichloride, itatimes mo lang siya. Paano? Mag-aano ka muna. Magka-canceling ka muna ng mga both or magkaparehang sign. Makikita mo dito, meron tayo 100 gram of chlorine 
one mole of chlorine gas over 70.91 gram of chlorine is equals to 1.41 mole of chlorine. So, paano yan? I ano mo muna? Cancel out. Cancel out. Ayan. Ngayon, pag na-cancel out, i-times mo to. 100 times 1 mole of chlorine. Pag tinimes mo tong dalawa, tinimes mo yung dalawa, ang makukuha mo is 100 gram of chlorine over 70.91 Yan yung makukuha mo. Now, ipag-divide mo lang yung dalawang yan. 100 gram divided by 70.91 Ang makukuha mong sagot dyan is yung 1.41 mole of chlorine. So, ganun lang kuwain yung molar mass ng isang element. Ganun lang gagawin mo para kuwain mo yung molar mass ni chlorine. Again, pupunta ka lang dyan, sisolve mo, tatimes mo to dito sa 1 mole, then i-divide mo dito to make to have a product of 1.41 mole of chlorine. Na gets? Okay po. So, after naman yan, si sulfur naman ang problema natin. Kung ano yung ginawa nating process kay chlorine, ganun lang din yung process, process na gagawin natin kanino? Kay sulfur. Ngayon, si sulfur, meron siyang 200 gram of sulfur. Plus, times 1 mole of sulfur over 256.5 gram of sulfur equals to 0 0.7797 mole of Sulfur or we have 0 0.78 mole of sulfur converted na to. So, ganun lang din. Hahanapin mo kung ano atomic mass or molar mass ni sulfur. So, sa periodic table, ang molar mass ni sulfur, we have 32.05. So, yung 32.05 na yan or 32.08 depende kung ano yung gagamitin ninyo. Pero I suggest yung una yung gagamitin ninyo. Itatayos mo saan? Ilang sulfur yung binigay? We have 8. So itatayos mo lang yan ng 8. So 40, 0, 4, tapos 16, 1, 3, 6, 9, 5, 8, 16, 24, plus 1, 825. So we have... 256.40 or 5 converted na to kasi may mga susunod pa ditong number di ba nga? pwede itong 08 pero yan pwede yung 08 pero yung 05 so pwede ang ginamit dito sa reactions na to is yung 08 32.08 hindi, hindi 32.05 pero yun nga converted na kasi ito equation natin na nandito dito pero the same lang yun ang product or 256.50 So yan Pag nakuha mo na yan Again I-divide mo lang yung Itatimes mo lang itong 200 uh, 200 gram of sulfur Doon sa 1 mole Then i-divide mo doon sa 256.5 Then after mo ma-divide Ang makuha mo dyan is 0 0.7797 mole of sulfur Or converted natin We have 0 0.78 mole of sulfur so, ganun lang mag-convert ng mass reactant to moles. Again, ito yung mass reactant. Iko-convert natin siya ng mole para makuha natin itong product na to. Now, let's proceed to step number 4. Sa so, step number 4, you're going to calculate the mole of the mole ratio of the reactant. So, meron tayong dalawang uh, ratio na ginagamit. We have Tinatawag tayong actual ratio saka stoichiometric ratio. Ito yung dalawang yun. To determine the actual ratio of a moles, divide the available moles of chlorine by the available moles of sulfur which you calculated in step number 3. So, di ba? Itong, itong mole na to, itong dalawang mole na to, yung mole ni chlorine saka mole ni uh, sulfur na calculate natin to saan? Sa step number 3. Ngayon, ang gagawin mo dyan para makalculate mo yung actual ratio, i-divide mo lang yung dalawa. 
Uh, nakuha natin yung uh, molar mass ni, ni chlorine doon na kung saan yung mole of ni, ni chlorine, we have 1.41. Sa sulfur naman, we have 0.7797 mole. Divide mo lang yung dalawa, ang makuha mo, we have 1.08 1.808 mole of chlorine and 1 over 1 mole of sulfur. So, ito yung actual ratio na tinatawag. Ibig sabihin, ito yung actual ratio ng product. In, ito yung actual ratio ng reactant nating dalawa. Again, sa kada 1.808 mole ng chlorine ay sa kada 1 mole of sulfur, meron tayong 1.08 na mole ng chlorine. Sa stoichiometry ratio naman, ang gagawin mo lang, kakapi mo lang ito, plus, plus 2, porcelain, dichloride. Kakapi mo lang yung chemical reactions na yan, Tapos, ikakapi mo yung coefficient. So, ano ba yung coefficient na meron dito sa dalawa? Sa reactant. Sa reactant ka titingin ha? Sa reactant. So, sa reactant dito, ang mole na na, or coefficient na nakalagay dyan sa ano, sulfur wala. Pero, kahit wala yan, ibig sabihin meron dyan isa. Again, meron dyan isa. Ngayon, para makuha mo yun, tatandaan, to get the stoichiometry ratio, divide the moles of the chlorine to the moles of sulfur from the balanced chemical equation. I-divide mo yung moles ni chlorine sa moles, sa moles ni sulfur. So, we have 4 moles divided by 1 mole of sulfur and 4 moles of chlorine. I-divide mo na yung dalawa. So, ito yung tinatawag natin stoichiometry stoichiometric ratio. So, paano ka lalabasan yung dalawang reaction na yan? Yun yung natawag natin stoichiometry ratio. Again, sa step number 4, you need to calculate the mole ratio of the reactant. We have dalawa, actual ratio, saka stoichiometric ratio. Sa actual ratio, i-divide mo lang yung na-calculate na mong moles sa sulfur, sa chlorine, Tapos kung ano yung, ito yung product, ito yung gatawan natin, actual ratio. Pag sa stoichiometry naman, i-divide mo lang yung moles ng chlorine doon sa coefficient, basa sa coefficient, then kung ano yung nalabas dyan na product, yun yung, yun yung stoichiometry ratio ng reactant. So after ng step number 4, na kung saan pinuha natin yung mole ratio ng reactant, Ngayon po mag tayo sa last step which is compare the actual ratio to stoichiometry ratio. Now, you're going to compare yung actual ratio sa stoichiometric ratio. Na kung saan, the actual ratio tells us that we need 1.808 moles of chlorine for every moles of sulfur. Ibig sabihin sa kada isang sulfur, kailangan natin ng 1.808 na mole ng chlorine. Na kung saan, in this stoichiometry ratio naman, 4 moles of chlorine is needed for every moles of sulfur. Ibig sabihin, sa kada isang sulfur, kailangan natin ng 4 moles, 4 moles ng chlorine para magkaroon doon sa reaction or para magkaroon ng reaction. Since only 1.808 moles of the chlorine is actually available for every 1 mole of sulfur instead of 4 mole of chlorine required by the balanced chemical equation, then chlorine is the limiting reactant. Ngayon, base dito sa pagkukompare natin, ibig sabihin, ang limiting reactant natin pala, so babalik tayo dun sa given. So, ang hinahanap pala, di ba kanina ang hinahanap is yung limiting reactant sa yung mass of bisulfur dichloride. Ngayon, sa step number 5, dito na natin malalaman kung ano yung limiting reactant. Base doon sa ginawa nating um, 
actual ratio sa stoichiometric ratio. Now, in comparing nga, na nakita natin dyan sa kada isang sulfur, kailangan ng 1.808 na mos ng chlorine. So, ibig sabihin, si chlorine yung reactant or siya yung limiting reactant. Siya yung nalilimits doon sa ibibigay na reaction kay chlorine. Ibig sabihin, nilimit niya lang sa kada isang chlorine, di ba? Meron tayong 8 chlorine nga. Meron tayong 8 chlorine. Sa kada 8 chlorine na yan, binibigyan ni ay sa, 8, sa kada 8 sulfur na yan, binibigyan ni chlorine ng 1.808 na mol lang yung isang chlorine, ay isang sulfur. So, ibig sabihin siya yung limiting reactant. Dinilimit Dinilim niya lang sa 1.808 mol of chlorine na ibinibigay niya. Kadali na tayo tapos. Kasi ang, ang nakuha lang natin is yung limiting reactant. So, na-identify natin doon sa, sa step number 5 na ang limiting reactant natin is si chlorine. Na hindi, meron pa tayong isang hinahanap. Ano yun? Yung mass no di sulfur dichloride. So, how to get the amount of product form doon sa disulfur dichloride na sinasabi. So, sabi dyan, use the calculated amount of moles of the limiting reactant to determine the mole of the product, then convert the number of moles of product to its mass. Again, kukuwain natin yung limiting reactant na nasolve natin doon sa limang steps. Then after that, madadetermine natin doon or makuha natin doon yung product or mass product nung disulfur dichloride. Paano yung formula? So, the formula that we need to use is, for example, mole, of, mole value of limiting reactant times mole ratio of the limiting reactant and the product times smaller mass of the product equals to mass of the product. So, pag tinimes natin lahat yan, makukuha na natin yung ano? Yung mass of the product. Yung last na tinatanong. So, doon sa nung-compute natin, yung limiting reactant natin, di ba si chlorine? Na-identify na natin si chlorine yung limiting reactant. So, kukuha lang natin yung moles na nung-compute sa kanya doon sa step number 3. So, sa step number 3, ang sabi doon, meron siyang 1.41 mole of chlorine. Then, after nun, gagamitin lang natin yung mole ratio of limiting reactant and the product. Yung mole ratio niya, in terms of stoichiometry, Meron tayong 4 moles of sulfur dichloride, disulfur dichloride over 1 mole of sulf, uh, 1 mole of chlorine. Then after that, ita times lang din natin siya ulit doon sa 1 135 gram of sulfur disulfur dichloride over 1 mole of disulfur dichloride. Then makukuha natin yung product na 190.4 gram of Sul disulfur dichloride. So, isa-isa natin para alam nyo computein. So now, try natin i-calculate. Lagay natin 1.41 mole of chlorine times 4 mole of disulfur dichloride over 1 mole of chlorine. Now, I, I cross out mo muna yung magkaparehas na unit. We have mole of chlorine and mole of chlorine. Now, after that, I times mo ngayon siya dito. 1.41 times 4, 4 moles of dichlorine dichloride. So, so pag pinag-times natin, 1.41 times 4 kasi may 4 moles ang makuha natin is 5.64 disulfur dichloride kasi lalagay lang natin siya 5.64 over 1 mole ah, over 1 over 1 na siya So, after nyan, di ba, 
of thy glory, thy glory right over 1. Di divide mo lang siya, 564 divided by 1. Ang makukuha mo pa rin is 5.64 thy soul for thy glory right. So, yun pa din. Kaya hindi mo na siya i-divide yan. Kaya yan na. So, after nito, so, nakuha na natin to. Napag-ano natin siya. Napag-times na natin. Next naman, dito naman sa 135 gram of sulfur, disulfur dichloride. Itatimes mo siya doon. So, again, yung 5.64 na nakuha mo dito sa reaction na to, muna, yung 5.64 mole of disulfur dichloride, itatimes mo na siya na ngayon dito sa 1... 135 gram of disulfur dichloride. Ngayon, sa so tatanong, Sir, saan po nakuha yung 135? Ganun din. Hahanapin nyo yung molar mass ni sulfur sa molar mass ni chlorine. So, since may dalawa tayong sulfur sa dalawa tayong chlorine, itatimes tumulang yung molar mass nito sa yung molar mass ni chlorine tapos ipagpa-plus mo. So, to calculate kung, mag, kung ilan nga ba para alam nyo, Sa periodic table, again, nahanapin nyo yung sulfur. Ilan ba yung molar mass ng sulfur? We have atomic mass ng sulfur. We have, sa kada isang sulfur, meron tayong 32.05. Sa kada isa ng, isa ng chlorine, meron tayong 35.44. Ngayon, ita times 2 mo lang sila. Bakit sir, ita times 2? Kasi nga may nakalalagay na subscript nilang 2. Ngayon, sa subscript na yan, 2, ibig sabihin may dalawang sulfur, may dalawang chlorine. Ngayon, ita times mo to ng 2 each yung ano, sulfur sa chlorine. Ngayon, 32.05 times 2, makakuha mong is 64.1. Ito yun, 64.1. Well, pag tinimes mo naman yung 35.44 times 2, ang makakuha mong is 70.88. Ngayon, yung dalawang yan, yung 64.61 na yan, sa kanya sa 70.88 na yan, ipagpa-plus mo lang siya. 135 gram of, ang mo is 135 gram of disulfur and dichloride. Kaya nakuha natin dito. Nag-gets? Okay po. Again, after yan, yung 5.64 mole of chlorine dichloride, ita times, i-aan mo muna, i-cancel out mo muna yung mag-similar unit. Then, after nun, makancel out, kita times mo na yung 5.64 saan? Sa 100, 135 gram. So, okay class, ipagwa times mo itong 5.64 sa 135 gram, ang makukuha natin is 761.4 over 1. So, again, hindi nyo na kailangan yung ipag-divide kasi the same lang naman din yung makukuha nyo. So, ibig sabihin, ang makakalculate natin product form is 764.41. So, sa module ninyo, makikita nyo dyan, ang sagot dyan is 190.4 gram of disulfur dichloride. Mali yun kasi may typo error doon. Kung baga, Ang nangyari doon, hindi niya na times ng 4. Kaya ang nakuha niya is 190.4 gram of disulfur dichloride. Pero, ang tamang sagot talaga is etong 164.4 gram of disulfur dichloride. So, ito yung tamang sagot. So, rewrite natin ulit yung equation para mas magets nyo. Again, 1.41 or 1.410 mole of chlorine times 4 mole of disulfur dichloride divided by 1 mole of chlorine times times 135 gram of sulfur dichloride over 1 mole. This equals to 761.4 gram of disulfur dichloride. So, ito yung tamang sagot. So, the same pa din kung paano natin siya minumpute dito pag pinag-time sa akin itong dalawa, ang makukuha natin dyan is 5.64.
Then, yung 5.664, katimes mo lang siya doon, ang makuha mo dyan is 701.4, which is, eto nga, yun yung sagot natin. So, that is how you're going to get the amount of product form. Ibig sabihin, itong product form ng disulfur dichloride is 761.4. Gram. So, ito naman next topic na i-discuss ko kung paano natin makuha yung excess reactant is just an another or parang add information na lang kung paano natin makukumpute yung excess reactant. Sabi dito, sabi nga doon, di ba, ang, ang limiting reactant natin is si chlorine. So, kung ibig sabihin si chlorine yung limiting reactant natin, si sulfur yung excess reactant natin. Kung baga siya yung leftover. Si chlorine naman yung naglilimit. Now, you can calculate the mass of sulfur needed to react with 1.41 mole of chlorine using a mole to mass calculation. Again, makukompute natin yung sulfur kung, ano, kung ilan yung excess reactant ni sulfur sa pamamagitan ng equation na gagamitin natin na mole to mass calculation. So, ang tanong doon, what about the reactant sulfur? Which you know is the excess. How much it of it actually reacted? You can calculate the mass of sulfur needed to react completely with 1.41 mole of chlorine using the mole to mass calculation. So, ano ba yung steps to calculate that? Yung unang steps natin is you're going to multiply the moles of chlorine. You're going to multiply the moles of chlorine by the mole ratio of sulfur to chlorine to obtain the number of moles sulfur. Tandaan. Note, the unknown is the numerator and the known is the denominator. Alam naman na siguro natin kung ano yung ibig sabihin ng numerator sa denominator, no? Hindi na natin kailangan i-discuss. Pero yun yung dapat yung tandaan. Pag sinabi natin unknown, siya yung numerator. Pag sinabi natin known, siya yung denominator. Now, as you can see in this equation, ito yung mole ni, no, ni chlorine. Ngayon, yung mole ni chlorine, itatimes lang natin sa mole ni, no, ni sulfur. So, ibig sabihin, yung numerator natin si sulfur. Saka yung denominator natin is si chlorine. So, ang gagawin lang, 1.41 times 1, then divided by 4, ang makukuha natin sa sagot is 0.35-3525 moles of sulfur or 0.35 mole of sulfur. So, i-require ko lang kayo sa exam, dalawang decimal places lang. Pag may mga points, dalawang decimal places lang para hindi siya masyadong mahaba. Kaya nga, ang sagot dyan, pwede 0.3525 or 0.35 ang pwede natin isagot. Now, para mas maintindihan, compute natin na isa-isa. So, sabi dyan, 1.41 mole of chlorine times 1 mole of sulfur divided by 4 mole of chlorine. Now, as I said, ang gagawin mo muna dyan, ang gagawin mo dyan is yung i i-cancel out natin yung magkaparehas na unit. So, we have moles of chlorine and moles of chlorine dito. So, after nun, pwede natin siyang i-times. 1.41 times 1. Ibig sabihin lang yan, ang makuha din natin is 1.41 mole of sulfur na over 4. Now, 1.41 divided by 4, ang makuha nga natin yung sagot is 0.3525 mole of sulfur. Or, ang pwede natin makuha dito is 0.35 mole of sulfur. So, ibig sabihin, ito yung molar mass ni no, ni sulfur. Yung 0.35. Now, after nito, after na, na makuha natin yung uh, mass ng sulfur na 
0.3525, imumultiply natin siya doon sa conversion factor na kung saan ginawa natin doon sa step number 3 or step number 4, I mean, doon sa conversion factor. Yung conversion factor na yun, ito yun. As I said nga a while ago, para makalculate natin yung excess reactant after natin makuha yung ano, yung molar mass ni sulfur na which is 0.3525 ngayon ang gagawin naman natin is ita times natin siya doon sa number of moles ni sulfur sa pangkalahatan which is yung 8 moles na data, sinasabi natin now yung 0.3525 mole na kung na-compute natin ita times natin saan? sa 256.5 ngayon sir saan na naman po ba nakuha yan? as I said kanina sa ating discussion makukuha mo yan pag pinag times mo yung atomic mass or molar mass ni sulfur na 32.05 ita times mo lang siya doon sa 8 na kung saan yung subscript niya ang makukuha mo dyan is 256.5 now, yung 256.5 na yan, i-divide mo doon sa, or pag pinag-times mo itong 0.3525 0 sa 256.5, i-divide mo siya saan? Sa 1 mole of, sa 1, sa 1, i-divide mo siya sa 1. Kasi i-aalo na natin ito. Ika-cancel out. Ika-cancel out na natin to. So, pag kinancel out, So, to cancel out, cancel mo yan, cancel mo yan, then, i-times mo tong 0.3525 dito sa 256, then, after nun, i-divide mo sa 1. As I said, hindi mo na kailangan i-divide kasi nga, ganun pa rin naman yung product na makukuha mo. At, yung sagot na makuha mo dyan is 90.41 gram of sulfur. So, ibig sabihin, ito yung excess Ito yung so, ay ito yung nagamit na mole, hindi pa sorry, hindi pa siya excess. Ito yung nagamit na mole nino or nagamit na gram nino ni sulfur. Ang nagamit lang sa kanya is 90.42 gram of sulfur. Pero doon sa given, hindi ba meron tayong 200 gram. Doon sa 200 gram na yon, only 92. Point 42 lang or 42 gram lang yung nagamit doon sa reaction kanino kay, kay chlorine now paano natin makukumpute knowing that 90.42 gram of sulfur is needed you can calculate the amount of sulfur left and reach when the reactions end since 200 gram of sulfur is available and only 90.42 of sulfur is required ngayon para makuha natin yung ano na yan yung excess reactant ipa minus lang natin yung 200 gram doon sa given sa original given ipag minus lang natin yung dalawang yan yung, yung 200 gram pag minus natin doon sa nakuha nating 90.42 gram na nagamit ng doon sa reaction so minus mo yung dalawa ang makuha mo is 109.6 gram of sulfur which is yun na yung tinatawag natin excess reactant I hope you learned a lot from my video that I created and I hope that you understand how to calculate the limiting reactants and the product form if you have any questions and clarifications please approach me personally on my official Facebook working account again thank you and God bless Bye!